So one of the most difficult things to tackle when content creating for a very long time is storage. So over the years, I've actually collected about 40 terabytes of footage so far. However, as I'm doing more and more content every single year and every single month, those numbers go up more rapidly. So today I have an all-in-one storage solution that is hopefully gonna fix my problem for good. So when it comes to working with storage, I'm looking for a few different things. One, with this storage system, I'm looking for it to obviously store my footage. Two, I wanna make sure that this system is gonna be easy for me to sync to some type of cloud solution so that I have that second backup. Three, this storage solution needs to be quick enough for me to edit 4K footage locally, so within my own house or studio, but also for someone across the world to be able to edit footage directly from this NAS. And then four, I kind of want this to be my end all be all system, or I want to make sure that it can upgrade super easy. Okay, so let's talk about the actual system that I selected. Today, I'm using the DS1821 Plus. Now to actually be able to edit that 4K footage locally, you need to make sure that you have fast M.2 drives within here, which are gonna actually cache from these big drives to these faster drives so that you have really quick access as you're editing. Now obviously you need RAM as well, and so I'll put a picture of the RAM that I went with on screen, but this is also something you definitely need to pay attention to. Now obviously when it comes to storage, I wanted to make sure that I had as much storage as I could possibly get with this drive. That's why I went with the 18 terabyte NAS drives from Seagate and I made sure that these are actually NAS rated. That's super important. People don't really pay attention to that whenever they're building these systems, but if you don't make sure that they are NAS specific drives, you could possibly have issues later on in the future where they either crash or etc. The reason why this is so important is because these drives are gonna be spinning all the time. As long as this system is on, which it should be on all the time, these drives are gonna be spinning. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and put all of our stuff in the actual NAS system so that we can get this guy up and running. All right, so now we're all set up. We have this Knowledge NAS actually plugged into power. We now have it connected to our fastest internet that we have available here at the home. Now, the next thing that I do wanna say is I actually don't have the system turned on currently because I didn't show you guys this in the last step, which is very important. You wanna make sure that you take this little key that comes with this system and you lock these drives so that they can't come out. So right here, we can see that it actually pops up. We're gonna hit connect. We're just gonna go through this prompt. And then right here, you just wanna make sure that if you did install drives that already have something on them, I don't want you to lose your data. This is gonna be completely cleared. Every drive on here is gonna be formatted. So yeah, make sure that you don't include drives in here that have data on them. So now we're actually gonna say, okay, we're okay for you to clear it. It's gonna run through this whole process and then we should be able to actually come back and continue our setup process. Okay, so once you actually have your username, your password and things set up, it says automatically install important DSM and package updates only required, yes. I mean, recommend it. So this is the recommended one. I'm just gonna keep going with that one. We're just gonna continue to go through. Now, if you have a Synology account, you can sign in here. I do have one, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. You can go and type in this exact URL and it'll allow you to get access to your NAS from anywhere you are, whether that's on your phone or et cetera. As long as you have access to the internet, you'll be able to use this. So you just wanna set this up however you want. So after checking both of those guys, we're just gonna hit submit and it's gonna continue to set up. So now we are actually inside the NAS. What's really cool about Synology is you almost get this kind of um, desktop version in a web portal for your actual NAS where you can manage your different files, download apps and etc. So let's go through here. We actually need to set up and create our storage media pool. All right guys, so I'm back. It's like an hour later now. I actually ran into an issue, one of my tries doesn't actually work. Had to uh, submit a return for this drive, a new one's gonna be in. So I did a lot of research and I looked to see if 
I'm able to actually still set up my Synology NAS and add the drive later. Okay, so now we're gonna go in here again. We're gonna hit start. We're gonna do the SHR and we're gonna select all of our different drives. So currently we only have 98 terabytes and that's because I don't have the other one installed, which sucks, but whatever for now. So we're gonna hit next. We're gonna say continue. We're gonna do max capacity because we want all of those gigabytes. We're gonna hit next again. We're gonna hit recommend it for this one and apply. Now it's just gonna make sure that you're okay with erasing all of your drives. We're gonna say, okay, we are okay with that. And now it's gonna begin to go through and create our media pool. Okay, so right up here, you can actually see it says we have 18 hours left which I'm not surprised. This is a lot of storage, so it's gonna take quite a long time to set up. So in the meantime, we can actually go over here and set up our cache. So to do that, we can just go over here into HDD slash SSD. And if you can see down here, we have two cache drives that basically aren't being utilized. So we can click right on there. We can go to manage drives and right over here, we can go to create SSD cache. So once we click on that, we're gonna hit volume one. That's our only option. We're gonna hit next, read and write cache. Next, we understand that everything could be lost if we remove these um, while they're actually working, makes sense. So now we have our RAID type. We only get one option for the RAID type, just like we only have one option for the volume. So now we're gonna select both of these drives, hit next. We understand they will be erased. We're gonna do max capacity and we're gonna hit next again and apply. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure that we we know all our data is gonna be erased again. So that's okay. Now we're just gonna continue on and it's gonna begin erasing these. So this process is gonna go a lot quicker than this actual process. So if we click over here now, it's saying we have 22 hours left. So yeah could definitely take a while. So it's a little under a week later now. We have our new NAS for the one that actually failed. We're actually gonna install this guy and see if it just works naturally right out of the box. So before I actually do that, I'm gonna go in here so you guys can actually see. We still have that number five missing and I've actually uploaded 37.8 terabytes already um, to this NAS. Now we're about to add this new drive and hopefully we get over 100 terabytes. Okay, so I installed the drive and I was happy to see that the light actually start flashing this time. So we do have a new message here. The system detected a, a newly inserted drive, drive five that is not in use. You can go to storage manage to manage this drive. So we are here now. We're actually gonna select that drive. We're just gonna go over here and say manage available drives, add drive for storage expansion. We're gonna click that option and it's gonna ask us where we wanna add that to. We only have one storage pool on this device. So we're gonna hit next. We're gonna select the drive one more time to make sure. So it's actually gonna get us to this number, 114.5 terabytes of data. That's awesome, so let's click next. So we wanna expand the capacity, so we're gonna click next and we're gonna hit apply. All the data on the newly added drive will be erased. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna close that out and we're just gonna scroll back up here to see if it actually got added in, what's going on over there. So if we go to overview, we see that we now have the drive in here. Okay, so it looks like this may take a while. It's counting down. At first it started at a very high number and now it's went down. So this could take a while. I'm not sure on the time. All right, so that's it. I fixed my storage solution for a very long time. Again, if I run out of storage at all, it's easy to upgrade it, adding an expansion pack on through the port summon pack. Really happy with how it came out and I'm excited to have all my storage in one place now. I will say that I definitely would not only rely on just this NAS itself. I will be also looking into backing up everything on this NAS to the cloud like I've been doing before. I'm gonna be using Backblaze B2 for this. And currently with the storage that I have, that's gonna run me about $190 a month. But this is really, really important to make sure that if for some reason this NAS actually crashes, you can recover that data from somewhere else. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. I hope you guys found some value in this video. I'll be leaving all my parts below in the description. And if you guys are actually interested in knowing how to set up this entire system with remote editors, then I recommend that you check out this video right over here.